I appreciate the opportunity to serve, um, and uh, I hope to hunt and talk as long as I do. So. took all the time, I don't have to say much. <laughs> we are, we are blessed to have Bill Hitchens represent us in, in this, in his district, in this state. I know of no other man that's, that's respected around our state and known around our state for his past service any more so than, than Commissioner, Representative Chairman Bill Hitchens. So y'all help me thank Bill for his service to our state. Thanks for having us. This is uh, always a good morning that I look forward to, and it's always good to be home. I can assure you of that. I want to follow up on something that Dr. Witt and um, Kim did, but I want to tell you the first time I've ever known Cosby Johnson to be um, not really forthcoming and not be a self-promoter. Cosby does a good job working with the chamber, but he's also the, the mayor of Brunswick, Georgia. Colin, we appreciate you, man. You've done a great work. And also, we have we have a lot of new startup businesses and expanding businesses in our county. They've been recognized. But I also want to make a special shout out to Thor Power. Uh, that Lee and Bob are here. We're glad to have y'all. And also another recognition from great friends of mine from Planners Electric. We're we're glad to have have Matt Brunson and and Norman. Norman Williams that um, run that outfit up in Millen and also serves the western part of Effingham, but they're also a part of the Oberthorpe Power family. We appreciate y'all and, and running the facility down now, Oberthorpe Bob on uh, Blue Jay Road. So great partners and, and great asset to us here in Effingham. Chris Clark and some other members, I think they were all together on that airplane and turned around and went back because of some issues this morning. So we, we appreciate Chris Clark, who's also the Chamber President, Georgia Chamber, who's also a Georgia Southern graduate. So we've got a great connection with, with, with Chris. Before I go any further, I need to take care of my personal business here. So there's two, two ladies here that mean the world to me. Certainly number one is my wife, Dale, a retired educator, as you heard, who, uh, who has able to, uh, enabled me to be somewhat successful. So Dale, thank you for all you do for, for me and, and for our area. And thanks, you're, you're very nice. <laughs> And many of you may know, Kaylin, or call Steve this one. Kaylin, stand up. <laughs> Kay, for those of you who don't know Kaylin, she's the uh, my administrative assistant. She's my executive administrative assistant. So she she does a great job. Job. She was her. She was she was born and reared right here in Effingham County. A graduate of Effingham County High School and, and Georgia College up in, in Milledgeville. So when y'all need me, y'all call me. So, and we'll, she's going with me if, if everything works out. And we if we transfer over to the speaker's office, she'll be there as well. So I look. She does a great job. And y'all see her fingerprints on many things that I do. So, Kayla, I appreciate you. And thanks for being here this morning. <laughs> of course, she lives in Atlanta, but her baby sister is graduating from Georgia Southern today, this afternoon, their graduation. So, I know Kayla and the family is very proud of that. I wanted to hit this later, but I'm going to go ahead and do it now since I'm looking at the sheriff. I also want to recognize our sheriff. Did y'all know that Jimmy McDuffie is the president of the Georgia Sheriff's Association this year? Jim, Jimmy's done great work over the years as chairing the, uh, the uh, Sheriff's Children's Home, and now assume this new task, and they just opened up a brand new facility, their headquarters up in Madison. So Jimmy's got a lot of good things going on there. The last thing I'll tell you about the Sheriff, Many of y'all, as Fran knows, have been a very successful uh, uh, income tax credit program that you're able to direct your Georgia income tax obligation to health care, and one of them is, is FDM County Hospital. We passed during the session, it's, it's in the works of being put together now. You'll also be able to, uh, to uh, direct your income tax obligation to the state, a portion of it at least, to the 
the sheriff and public safety folks around our state. So I was talking to Jimmy this morning early. We're going to get something out to y'all on that real soon when all that's put together. But it's really close. The legislation's passed. We just have to get the nuts and bolts and the practice of it, get it, get it out there. So we're going to do that, and it'll be a great opportunity to help people that do, do so much for us, our public safety uh, expert professionals in our county. So thanks, Jimmy, you and your staff for being here. I want to talk about what I believe was one of the most productive sessions I've been a part of in the last 18 years since I've been in the House. A very conservative, uh, conservative ses session here in 2022. We started off by protecting our Second Amendment, amendment rights by passing the constitutional carry. It protects the rights of law-abiding gun owners by making it easier for them to carry without a permit. But most importantly, it also is still illegal for criminals to carry guns. We know how that works. We thought that was important to make sure we expanded those Second Amendment rights to protect us all. One of the other things we've been very proud of, and Governor Kemp, who's done a great job of working in conjunction with us in the House and providing great leadership for our state, as y'all all know, we reduced this, we, we passed the largest income tax in our state's history. We reduced the state income tax to less than 5%. That's in the works, it's, it's being triggered by several things. I think that's going to allow us all to keep more of our hard-earned money, and it will uh, third our third income tax cut in the last five years. What what does that mean to to you? Well, a family of four making sixty thousand dollars that will save them more than six hundred dollars a year in their state income taxes. We've also done something that I think has been pretty important. Y'all enjoyed as we've seen rising uh, energy prices because of the policies coming out of Washington primarily our president, we suspended the state gas tax. Since earlier this year, it's been suspended, the governor suspended it again for the month of December. We, we, we will be making a decision on how we move forward with re-implementing our gas tax come January. It's about $160, 70000000 million a month, but we've been able to backfill that billion dollars, if you will, over the year from other tax revenues because Georgia, as you also know, has continued to thrive through this pandemic. By that policy, we've been able to keep our, our gas prices in Georgia, as you see on the news every night, some of the lowest in the nation. And it's been a t historically high, high energy tax. And we've saved our families thousands and thousands of dollars. And also very importantly, we've kept our economy moving forward, which is important to all of us. We've also refunded through several processes more than a billion dollars and your, and your taxes back to Georgia's. We talk about education, preparing our, our students for, for the future of workforce training. We passed legislation to keep the basic concepts out of our classrooms and off, off of our athletic teams. Here in Effingham County, we clearly know that education is our future. That's why it's so important to protect the rights of parents to be involved in their children's education. Our school board and, and leadership does a great job with that, but that's not the case in all of Georgia. So we wanted to make sure if that happens and parents have the opportunity to be involved and we're able to pass that historic legislation. Another piece of historic legislation that we passed was a mental health overhaul bill, HB 1013. We've talked about, talked about that before here. But that's something, one of the bills, one of the pieces of policy that truly impacts all of us personally and our families, no matter where you are in this state. Mental health re arises regardless of your race, your religion, or any other demographic, demographic issue that, that impacts the people of our state. I know, and you know, it takes all of us, not just government, to fight the mental health battles. And that's what I was really proud of when the House unanimously, unanimously passed HB 1013 for that comprehensive overhaul where we treat mental illness in the state. That is an ongoing process that will be a priority when we go back in January and we continue that work and make sure we do it all right, provide the funding and any other policy that may be necessary there. That's a quick review of the 2022 session, which I mentioned to you was very impactful, one of the, most, the best sessions I've ever been a part of. As you know, this next session we're going to be continue, as I say, about mental health. Now, the man behind the mental health legislation, that policy, that initiative that impacts us all, was Speaker David Ralston. 
He was a man that was deeply passionate about improving the lives of all Georgians who struggled with mental health. As Bill was and is, and I was very humble to call Speaker Ralston a friend and a mentor. And I was honored when my colleagues in the House Republican Caucus nominated me as their candidate to succeed him as the next Speaker of the House. Thank you. A, a very bittersweet moment for me personally and for my colleagues. On January the 9th, the whole House, Republicans and Democrats alike, will convene to elect our new Speaker. As Speaker Ross always said, the Speaker represents not, not Republicans or Democrats, but he represents the entire House, all the members of the House. If elected by my fellow legislators, I look forward to serving the new role and helping guide the House forward over the next two years. From cutting taxes for hardworking Georgians to uh, providing more educational funding to help overcome pandemic learning losses in our schools, we will continue fighting for conserving Georgia values during this upcoming session. As someone has seen, seen firsthand the benefits provided to our district by our poor in Savannah, we have represented the poor to our good friend Lee Beckman, I am committed to protecting and improving our state's infrastructure to fuel quality economic development, jobs for our young people. By allowing economic development to work hand in hand with infrastructure, with, excuse me, with, by allowing economic development to work hand in hand with infrastructure development, I know we can create sustainable growth across our district, Effingham County, Southeast Georgia, that respects and preserves our natural environment. Together, we will maintain our region's economic growth, as is based a lot of it is right here in Effingham County, and continue to keep Southeast Georgia and Effingham County the best place, not only in this state, state but in this nation, to live, work, and raise a family. As we move forward, I hope you will continue to keep you updated on your thoughts regarding proposed legislation we, as we head into this next session. I am honored to represent Effingham County along with Chairman Hitchens, Senator Hickman, who's doing a great job, and I will do everything I can to represent your values in Atlanta. Please know that there's anything that I ever can do as I represent House District 159, please don't hes hesitate to reach out to me. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for our sponsors. And I think we have time. We'd be glad to answer any questions. So thank you all for having us.